ladies welcome to today's video today we are doing a new episode of hola dulce hi dulce do you have any tips for girls with low self-esteem i tend to overthink everything that i do i always want things to be perfect i hate criticism i'm always afraid to be wrong i come to the conclusion that i have very low self-esteem i don't know where to start to get out of this hole i'm a wife a mom a grad student in the beginning of a career and I feel like it's detrimental to my future. If you have low self-esteem, it means that you don't think and you don't believe that you can accomplish your dreams or that you don't have the ability to do that or you, or you see yourself separate from the people that are achieving great things in life or have achieved. You see them as just people from another world like Oprah, for example, or Elon Musk. When you see people like that of that stature and that type of success, it's kind of hard to envision yourself as someone like them. They kind of seem like, what What do they do? Like, wow, they, they're so talented. They're so lucky um, because they've been able to achieve all of these great things in their life. And the truth of the matter is that Oprah is no different than you and I. Beyonce is no different than you and I. We do put these people on a pedestal because they are celebrities and they seem bigger than life and they're in television and in movies. And when we go to the movies, we see them in these huge screens. And so to us, we feel like little people and we're just watching these superstars. But I feel like if anything, 2020 and the pandemic has taught us that they're just people like you and me. They get affected by everyday things just like you and me. And I think something that's really important as a society in general is for us to stop putting people on a pedestal because when we do that, we put ourselves down, you know? So we are no different than them and we need to recognize that. We feel like we're lacking self-confidence within ourselves. The very, very first thing that I would say and that I actually did in my own life because I used to also have very low self-esteem my whole life um, up until like my 30s, which is only three years ago. And so I think the very first thing that you can try is going back and pinpointing those moments, like those major moments that happened to you since you can first remember like your first memories. And I think this would be a great time to take out a notebook, a journal and write about these things because if you can go back and honestly, it takes work. It takes work to get there. It takes work to take some time out, out of your schedule to sit down and write in your journal and think about your life and the things that you have been through. I think that's so important because not a lot of people want to do that. That's actually work. Working on yourself is work. And when you give yourself that space to think about, well, what happened to me when I was little that made me feel like I wasn't worthy enough? Did a teacher say something to you when you were young that made you feel like you're never gonna amount to anything? You should never try this. Um, I remember Louise Hay, um, rest in peace, she told a story about a little girl who loved to sing and she would sing all the time. It was her favorite thing in the world to do and she had a beautiful voice. And one day, her mom and her were going somewhere um, and so the little girl sat in the back seat and she was just singing her heart out, just singing, singing, singing. She had no idea that her mom was having a really rough day and her mom was just overwhelmed, filled with anxiety. And she yelled at the little girl and she said, will you just stop singing? Because she just couldn't handle all of the noise and all of that. It was just like the mom was just at her tipping point. Once she heard her mom say, will you please stop singing? That little girl felt shame when she was just naturally expressing herself. She felt shame and she never sang again. She went into a little, a little, um, a little coil, like a little ball. And the story goes that she, not that she never sang again, ever again, but she felt like, well, singing is not something that I should do then because singing, brings pain to my mom and I don't want to hurt my mom and that was a little girl just expressing herself her beautiful voice just being a little girl you know and sometimes you know parents don't realize that this that the things that we say and I think that's such an important thing as a parent is being so aware of what we say to our children you know like if you have a a, a kid 
and that kid is um, and this is a story that I was um, told recently by someone that I know and she told me that her daughter hit her little daughter because she went into the bathroom and she got all the toilet paper and she got it all wet like she dunked all the the toilet paper into the bowl and I think she took out the toothpaste or something and so when they finally found the little girl they la regañaron y le pegaron en la mano don't you ever do that again and um you know <sighs> that was one of those moments that the little girl was just being a little girl and exploring and just you know experimenting and seeing oh what is this toothpaste what does this do oh toilet paper oh let's what happens if you put it in the water that looks cool they're just experimenting with life and the mother came in and hit the little girl and told her that basically the message that was sent to the little girl was you are exploring your creativity and that it's not okay Little kids don't know that squeezing the toothpaste out and, you know, that's being wasteful. There's a way to communicate that you're being wasteful, you know, like you, we shouldn't squeeze out all the toothpaste because it costs money or, you know, whatever you want to say about those things. But like physically hitting a child to teach them that lesson instills a lot of shame. And shame is one of those emotions that brings about low self-esteem, self-doubt, so many things, you know? So just reflecting back in your life, where have you felt shame? Who has made you feel shame? What have you done throughout the course of your life, especially your childhood, because that's where we really form all of these low self-esteem and low self-love and no self-love and no confidence. Like all of these things happen throughout our childhood, you know? Um, so for me, that was like a really big, a, a really big thing is a really huge thing. Yeah. You know, you can also think about, uh, talking to a therapist. I think that would be very beneficial because they can give you the tools for you to uncover those answers that you're looking for. I would really recommend that honestly is taking the time to do that inner work for yourself and carving out that space. And I know as a mom and as a grad student and all of the other things that, are very demanding on for us women. It seems like it's hard, but I know you can carve out. I know you can do it. And this is priority, you know, like self work for ourselves. It's not, it, it, it can't be a luxury anymore. It's not something that we do if we have time, especially after last year, 2020, I feel like self care and healing yourself should be number one top priority above anything else. Because once we heal all of those wounds, that's when we are also going to be able to flourish as the best mothers, the best wives, the best partners. Everything just flourishes when we work on ourselves. It's like the foundation, you know? Okay, so simultaneously, while you are journaling about those major moments in your life where you have felt shame, while you do that, I also want you to challenge yourself to do things that you think you can do. You're a grad student. Look at that. Like, first of all, you got to give yourself props. Okay. I feel like you're not giving yourself props because you're killing it. You're already killing it. You're already doing incredible. It's just, it's probably just you not seeing that, you know, but I'm sure if you ask your daughter or your husband, your partner, I'm sure they have nothing but wonderful things to say about you and they are so proud of you. But sometimes it's just harder for us to see it for ourselves, you know? So one thing that I would love for you to do is to find something challenging and, and do it. So for me, it was working out. Working out honestly has been my therapy and it has saved me from going into depression because that's something that I've suffered for so long is like a chronic depression. To be depressed and sad is not normal. So what I did is after I had my baby, that's when I felt like, you know, the postpartum depression, everything was just like, I saw the train coming my way and I said, nope, 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 nope. I am not going to give into that. I am going to rise above everything that is happening, all of the changes that are happening happening in my life, and I am going to overcome and come out even, even better. 
And so what I did was full, focus full on on my mental health. Number one priority was my mental health. And so I decided to take care of my body also because I had to, I had to look at my life and, and, and check it and see where in my life am I going wrong? You know, where, where, what are the habits that are keeping me down? Who are the people that are keeping me down? You really have to take a hard look at your life. And so I decided to take up just working out like a maniac, right? When I first started out, I've been working out for like a year and a half now, almost a year and a half. Consistently, almost every single day, ladies, um, six days a week. Proud of myself because I, I, it's like, it's a habit now. I love boxing. I think, oh my gosh, check, try boxing or like a really aggressive sport because I feel like that's where you let out all of that anger, all of those feelings. I'm not saying that you have anger because that's not what you expressed, but sometimes you, you feel angry. So check out a sport that's really gonna allow you to release all of your feelings, all of your emotions. I went to war with myself every single day visually in my mind. I did kickboxing and I would box the S out of myself, like my old self, like that self that was low self-esteem, no self-confidence. Like I went to war with her almost every single day. And um, I started also lifting weights. I wanted to do something like really strenuous because I wanted to show myself that I was strong and I needed to see that. So every day that I would show up um, in my backyard to put in a workout, I would literally go to war in my mind. And when I would just keep pushing myself beyond the limits, when I was done with that workout, I was just shedding tears. Why? Because I was so proud of myself. Like that feeling of just pushing yourself beyond the point that you thought you couldn't go, like that's where you need to get. You need to find something that's gonna give you that kind of feeling because once you see how powerful, how strong you are as a person, how you can overcome any challenge that just raises your self-esteem and your self-confidence, you see that, wow, I can actually do these things. So you gotta do the work. You gotta look for that moment in your life or those moments that you felt like defined you and that made you feel like you couldn't do the things that you wanna do. Like, who are you to do them? Who made you feel that? What event made you feel that? Step one. Step two, pick up a sport, pick up a hobby that is really gonna push you beyond your limits so you can show up every day for yourself and prove to yourself, you're not proving anything to anybody. You're proving to yourself that you can do this, okay? And once you're able to do that in the gym, in your backyard, working out, pushing yourself, you take that same energy as a grad student, in your career, as a mother, as a wife, as a business owner, when you show up at an event, you're confident, you're a warrior, you're a badass. You know, that's where it starts. And once you start that journey and you see how of a badass you are, everything is gonna change for you. I'm telling you, you're gonna learn to love yourself more, your self-esteem, you're gonna see yourself higher, you're gonna see yourself just like like a Beyonce or a Jeff Bezos or an Elon Musk. You're like, I can do what they do. I just gotta figure out what are those habits that these high achieving people, what do they do? How can I implement those into my life? Because we are capable of doing anything we wanna do. And you're gonna come across people, like I've had someone um, try to tell me like, whew, so many things change. Even the criticism that you get from people also changes because it just doesn't affect you anymore because you're a freaking badass and you you don't need to show it or prove it to anybody else. You, you prove it to yourself every single day that you show up for yourself doing that inner work. And it's not a smooth ride, I have to add. It's not a smooth ride. No matter how you feel, you keep showing up for yourself every single day. Some days you don't wanna wake up early. Some days you don't wanna do that inner work. There's days that you don't wanna do that. There's days that you maybe go a few days without doing it, that's okay as long as you are consistent and you always keep showing up for yourself, always, that inner healing work. Because once you figure out who did that to you, you take that power back. For me, it was like one of my big things, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, um, throughout my high school, since I started school, elementary, nothing but D's and F's. I was like the lowest graded student. Um, high school, I barely passed high school, junior high, I barely graduated high school and junior high. I had nothing but D's. I even failed physical education because I just didn't want to dress out and I wanted to just rebel. Uh, but I barely graduated. 
And um, I, I remember just feeling like, oh my God, I'm so unintelligent because um, I failed basically throughout school. It's just that I, I, I just, school was just not my thing. It's never been my thing. I, I don't necessarily like authority in a sense of like, I don't like people over me and telling me how to live my life and telling me what to do. I don't like that at all. Since I was a little girl, that's why I'm, I have my own business and I'm the boss because I don't like no one bossing me around. Like don't boss me around. I've been that way since I was a little girl. And then I started looking at my life and, and, and really paying a close attention to everything that I was achieving in my life and the person that I was becoming. And I'm like, damn, those letters mean absolutely nothing. All the grades that I got in school mean zero to who I am right now. And how was I going to let a letter define me and make me feel, for lack of a better word, less than smart? You know, I'm intelligent. I'm highly intelligent in so many different ways. And sometimes um, you might think that just because you don't get straight A's in school that you're not smart, you're probably very highly intelligent in other areas. You just got to find where your intelligence comes from, where it thrives the most. Not everybody gets straight A's because that's just not what everybody enjoys. Some people enjoy it. They love getting their straight A's and that's good for them. That's where their intelligence lies. Like They love that, you know? but other, other people don't. So for me, it was like overcoming that. That gave me a lot of low self-esteem because I just didn't see myself as a smart person. But all along, I was. <laughs> all along, I was. I just didn't like school, you know? So that's what I mean. When I realized that, I was like, I never saw myself as a less than smart person ever again. And that's where my whole life changed because my confidence was just on a whole different level because I saw my true power. I saw my own light. You got to see it for yourself. Don't let anybody like it's beautiful when other people see it, of, of course. But you got to see you. You got to see you. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. If you guys have anything to say in the comment section, you guys know it's the best um, time of this whole creation of making videos is the comment section. I really appreciate it. I know my girl, if you guys have any advice, drop it in the comment section for our girl in the community. How do you raise your self-esteem? What do you guys have to say? You know, what has been your experience? What would be your advice if she was your sister, your mom, or your best friend? So drop a comment. Also, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit a thumbs up if you guys liked this episode of Hola Dulce or if you just like these videos in general because if you show me that you like it with a thumbs up, then I know that we're on the right path. Okay, so thank you for watching, ladies. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love you so much. Have a blessed and beautiful day, and I can't wait to see you soon.